Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 199. Big round number coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, today is the like last Thursday of October, which is kind of interesting because Halloween's right around the corner. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. As you can see on the side here, uh, Jacob's already been having a conversation before we started the meeting about crazy new features in Burn that we're not actually talking about today. But uh, he got here early, so he gets to have those conversations. Uh, what are we doing today? We are doing a roll call. Hey, Jacob, good to see you. Thank you for starting the conversation. Anybody else that's hanging out with us right now, feel free to say hi in the um, in the chat over there, uh, we will do triage like we always do. A few more issues came in the last couple weeks. Um, then we will continue our Wix v4 design discussion. Uh, I think we have, I hope, an easy one, and then we have a big one, but we'll see about that, at least one that needs lots of discussion. I think. And then, as always, we'll do questions, comments, other things that people want to bring up that aren't on the agenda. Uh, but let's, first of all, let's go take care of triage. Bob, you ready? Go, go, go. All right. Uh, starting with the oldest here, net effects, net core, don't detect newer versions. Our library won't detect newer versions, according to Sean. I thought we did this. Mm, then we didn't triage did we it away. Did we talk about this last week? Yeah, There's we, a milestone, but no label. <laughs> right. I think this goes into... I don't know, the extensions, and we go, we did talk about this as a, this is really unfortunate, and it's going to take work to solve it, right? Yeah. Because it's going to need a bundle extension. Yes. <sighs> oh, that thought, one was easy then. I thought last week we had the inverse. I don't know what you mean by inverse. Um, did I do oldest to newest? Is that what he means by inverse? <laughs> I try to always get the older bugs because... That way, this list is more stable if I start with the older ones. Um, otherwise, I always have to scroll to the bottom, which more is a problem when I have multiple pages, but not that. Burn shouldn't propagate the burn file handle self-handle. Um, V3 and V4. The clean room passes it. Uh, so this doesn't right. So this doesn't have any real problem due to the way that we're parsing the command line, but it could be an issue. Theoretically, yeah. Uh, well, and it's not. We shouldn't do it in general. All right, great. Uh, are we doing that in four? I don't know. Well, <laughs> chances are you'd be the one that'd be interested in it, unless Bob wants to go uh, spend his. Uh, native code time working on this one. Um, yeah, this is less about native code than deciphering some of these things that I wasn't involved with. Yes. Strong, maybe. So I guess this goes in the 4X, and we'll see if anybody picks it up. As long as it's harmless. Because so far it has been harmless, right? Yeah, it would have really blown up something if it didn't work. Yes, things would have definitely been weird. All right, I guess 4x it is, and then burn. Um, default bitmaps UIs are not sized properly. I don't... I thought for sure we had an existing bug on this, but I haven't found one. Um, basically, especially with, you know, um, high DPI being a thing these uh, days. Um, it's impossible, given the fact that MSI does not have support for you know scaling and and DPI size, um, to have a single bitmap that's going to work everywhere every time, unless. Well, so I see two options. One the bitmaps could be solid colors. That would solve the problem. Because the solid color, that, that scales just fine. Um, the alternative, and this is where I thought we had an existing bug, is it might be possible to, you know, in a combination of extension and custom action to 
have control conditions to let you supply multiple bitmaps that are scaled appropriately for common DPI size. Maybe. I, I don't actually know that it would work. Um, but this isn't our image, is it? Like that is theirs. No. But no, this I one think... is ours. Is he? I'm wondering if he's actually complaining that the numbers don't match because Windows installer counts in, what are they, dialog yeah. units instead of actual XY? No, no dialog units, that's, that's GDI. Um, they call them installer units, which is a horrible name for <laughs> that, but whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you can see the, the what is it called, the before image is, yeah, pretty jagged. This is ours, right? Yes. Oh, correct. I, I don't know if it ever looked that much better, honestly, but okay. Um, yeah, actually... It's this not horrible. There. It's not horrible because, you know, the the original problem we had. I have to go back and look because I thought we took care of that. Um, was when you know we had these alternating dot patterns that looked horrific when they were scaled. Um, I thought we fixed that. Um, but, you know. He's saying if you pick the right size based on your particular, you know, resolution and um, <laughs> so I, I believe I discovered way back in the day that MSI used the the message box font size to control its scaling for quote unquote installer unit. Um, Anyway, again, without without the ability to provide multiple multiple sizes and scalings, there is nothing that that we can do. Um, short of again, solid color, and that's where I'm like, well, you know, it would be bland, but that is the only option that I know of off the top of my head to make this work. Um, Because so just like a solid red block without even the icon in it? Yeah, nothing else scales. <laughs> like I said, bland. It would definitely encourage people to, you know, come up with their own. And then they face this problem, which is, you know, what's the correct sizing? Um, you know, how do you make it work? All right. Um, where do you want to send this bug? Because... I don't know how much we're going to do for MSI UI, like Jacob says. It's like BAs can have much more control. How much more are we going to do for an MSI UI? Exactly. Yeah. It's it's um, the the only <laughs> your choices are bland or a lot of work that that seems like it's not you know, something people are going to want to invest the time. All right, so I guess we put it in 4X and say, hey, if someone really wants to take a shot at this DPI problem inside Windows installer, they could go dig into it and everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Depth created. Awesome. Great if, um, you know, it worked MSI UI. Wix converter should fix dollars to the bank, given that dollar was deprecated and it's no longer deprecated and no longer supported. Yes, I agree with this. I don't know what you're talking about. It's always said deprecated there. Oh, damn it. <laughs> GitHub shows me this. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. Okay. Wasn't expecting it to be controversial. Um, I'll go ahead and take it and okay. schedule it in 4.0. Shouldn't be that hard, right? Well, you have to look at every value. I don't know if we've done anything that does that. We have not, so it's actually kind of interesting. You're almost better off just looking at the text. <laughs> Sorry, looking at what text? The, the, oh, the, mean, the, the actual... The, the file as a text file, replacing this, a and then, yeah. then loading it into the DOM. How am 
I do that? On the flip side, you only have to look at attribute values, so it might not be that hard to write something in X doc that says, give yeah. me all yeah. attribute values. I will look <laughs> at them. <laughs> um, name property does not assign edit value. I look at this, and I think this is another... Is this yeah, the other accessibility thing? Yeah, the long line of accessibility thing. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yes, it'd be fantastic if someone would stop opening these and actually say, you know, how about just someone go through that understands this and fix it? All right, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I always complain about that. Because <sighs> I don't know enough about it. and It's just a research project that I don't want to undertake. It's fascinating, but not nearly at the top of my uh, I know, I just have too many other things. Um, all right. That's all the bugs then, right? That's going to go away to yep. somewhere. All righty then. So I think that says we come back to our discussion. So I was, I actually tried to put these strike throughs in my mail saying, hey, look at all the stuff that we've got through in our design discussions. And then I realized that my mail goes out into plain text and the strike through is being removed. So it looks like we're still talking about these things. So I had to remove them from the mail. But here they are. Um, two things left to talk about. 4703 and um, uh, 6209. I'm hoping 4703. Well, I don't think 4703 is going to be uh, controversial. Controversial? Controversial. I do expect we might have a problem with how we're going to solve it, though. So let's go talk about that one first, and then we'll come back to this big language design change. All right. Um, don't require Wix ball extension when using Wix NetFX extension. Uh, Sean, can you... Um, Walk us so guess, through the dependency here. So the problem is, is that the NetFX extension has the NetFX um, package groups, but then if you want to use it as a prereq for a managed BA, then you need to provide more information. So like in three, there was this magic variable that got set that we didn't have to really worry about this problem, but in four, there's no, like the prerequisite, like all prereq packages are equal. So there's additional authoring you have to do in order to say that this package is a prereq for my managed BA. So originally I had the authoring in NetFX and then but the problem with that is, is that like the ball extension really wants to write tests using that, but also there's custom, it's not tables anymore, like custom bundle elements declared in the ball extension that the NetFX extension has to use in the authoring. So it's kind of a question of, does it actually make sense to have the prereq authoring in NetFX or ball? And if it stays in NetFX, then we have the problem where we can't really write tests in the ball extension referencing the real prereq packages because the NetFX has a hard dependency on the ball extension. Does that make sense? Yep. So one option is to move the test to NetFX, basically saying to test prereqs, you have to test them here, which essentially is where the feature is used as opposed to where the feature is implemented. Um, or we have to, how would we move the authoring from NetFX to the Wix ball extension? Yeah, this so is for an MBA, Jacob. What I did was, um, like, you know, you'll have like NetFX 4. I don't remember the actual name, but let's say it's NetFX 4. And then what I did was I added a separate package group, NetFX 4, as prereq. So they're actually already separate package groups today. So it'd be as simple as just moving 
that extra authoring into the ball extension. And it's just a package group ref, so like the ball extension shouldn't actually have to reference NetFX. But if you actually use it, you'd have to obviously reference both extensions. If you were to use it, you'd have to reference both extensions. But in well, order, you had to before, didn't you? Yeah, to write an MBA, you had to be referencing ball extension anyway. Yeah. And if you want the pre, the NetFX packages that we provide, then you would have had to reference the NetFX extension. So from the user's perspective, it doesn't really matter. No, it's a code organization behind for us. Is there any benefit for an MBA Wix extension? I don't, I don't know about that. So I guess Jacob wants more micro repos. <laughs> well, I mean, you could ask. I don't know how that would help us a lot in this case anyway. Uh, Sean, this doesn't change the fact that util extension is still required for both, right? That it's it's a dependency, but not circular. So. Uh, yeah, there's no yeah. circular. Yeah, util's kind of at the bottom. Yeah, both ball and NetFX use it for searches. Right. Ball doesn't use it. Never mind that. But it, how much gets duplicated? No, Is there a no, need for net effects not an MBA? Yes. yes. That's just treating yeah. net effects as a prereq for your app using app. with standard BA. There's yeah. MSI searches as well. It's not just burn packages. Right. And I think there's the, what is it, GAC support? I think it has something in addition to the package stuff, the detection. No, it's probably not worth splitting the ball extension in the two. I don't think that would help us. Um, unless it helps a concept count where you're like, yeah, I, I, I'm i building an MBA, so I use this extension. If I'm using a native BA, I use this extension. I don't think that helps people, though. Um, this is just the bootstrap application layer all wrapped up in one, which is fine. The tie is net effect. Keeping that effect separately is definitely a thing. Um, because I think having the ability to use a Wix standard BA, for example, or a native BA at all to install everything is a great idea. It avoids lots of restart challenges you might have and other things like that. So um, due to the MBA using the .NET framework and then replacing it while it's running and all those kinds of fun, crazy things. Um, How much would move from NetFX to um, the ball Wix extension? How much authoring moves? I mean, each as prereq package is probably four lines. Uh, OK, OK. Let's go try to find that. Nope, not here, right? It's in NetFX. Yeah, NetFX. Wow. But I did this so long ago, I don't remember where they are. <laughs> uh, offering. I just look at 4.8 probably would be the easiest. Yeah, they're just separate fragments in the same file, right? Then I would guess it's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Package group as prereq, and then it brings this piece of information in with it. So 
So then that would mean we have this magic string that we're essentially keeping in the sink. These two pieces of data, if they're split across repos, we have to keep them in sync. That's the downside, right? Right. And not type here. Why can't I copy? Oh, I keep hitting the Windows key, that's why. Alright, time to wake up. There it is. And it's basically that. So you know. So this would mean that ball extension has a dependency on net effects. Oh, uh, I see what, maybe I understand now what Jacob's saying is, that would mean everybody using the ball extent. No, you wouldn't have to. No, you'd only need NetFX if you were using the MBA parts of it. Because it's in a separate fragment. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and who creates the reference to this ID, Sean? The user would reference that package group which then brings this in and then that ties everything together yeah that package ID has references that package the ball extension creates a simple ref how does this this package group doesn't require the net effects, though. In the end, shouldn't it? Sorry. This what is... I would, yeah, like like I was just saying, the that ball element mm -hmm. creates a package, oh, creates a, reference. a simple ref. Got it, to that ID. Got it, right here. Using that. And the license URL is for the UI, right? So I guess, Jacob, maybe you're getting caught up on the title of the issue that I that we're talking about. Like, I already solved the title of the issue. Like, Rob was asking me for a number, so that this is kind of what started the whole thing. Uh, but so today, you can use the Wix NetFX extension without referencing the Wix file extension, as long as you don't bring in the parts that actually do require the ball extension. Yeah. yeah. My mistake. I, I totally bypassed the title because I know this is about the circular dependency and I didn't even look at the title and, or notice that the issue is closed, um, which is kind of weird that we're talking about something that's been closed. Um, <laughs> I was too focused on the, we have a circular dependency that we have to tease out. Um, I think this makes sense to me that this moving this to the ball extension is probably the least dangerous thing. I guess the only bad part of that is now every time you add a new one, you'll have to remember to go the ball extension and add the prereq version of it. Yes, that's true. What the alternative is all of the tests move into the NetFX extension, right? Alternative is the tests reference a package that isn't actually the NetFX. Like you can write the tests in the ball extension to just be a random exe package. Oh, I see. Oh, huh. well, that maybe that's not bad. I mean, it's testing the same. It works the same. Yeah. You don't have to but test the it real net effects. But also, you had this weird net effects extension is referencing the ball extension, which is kind of weird, but it's, I mean, it works. And Only if you use this fragment do you need that reference, though, right? Right. I mean, like, when you... When you're doing updates across all the repos, you're going to have to do ball extension before NetFX. Mm -hmm. I 
I think I still lean towards putting this in MBA. Although, although, oh crap, that means that every time there's a new net effects, we have to update the MBA, which otherwise we might never update after the initial release or whatever. Right, like if we get MBA right, then we're done. We may never release it again. Where if we put this block inside the MBA, then every time there's a new net effects that you want to take a defense on, then we have to go update the MBA too. Well, I mean, MBA is with standard BA and net core BA, so it's not like the MBA is going to finalize and we're never going to touch it again. It's possible. Right? I mean... I like your optimism. <laughs> but, but, I mean, yes, but... But the, the updates are no more often than whatever, you know. They are our schedule and our bugs as opposed to the .NET Framework schedule, where the NetFX extension is clearly going to be tied to the .NET Framework schedule, right? New versions will end up here as they are released by Microsoft, you know. Yeah, you probably should say the .NET schedule, since the .NET Framework Sorry. is kind of a... .NET schedule, yes. And remember, .NET Core releases monthly. Yeah, but they don't release their major releases. Well, yeah, but yeah, currently, I, yeah, NetFX extension, which probably is the wrong name now, um, <laughs> you know, has support for for the point releases of .NET Core. And yeah, you know, so yeah, they're gonna it's gonna be out of date every month. They they don't service their minor releases except by creating point releases. Right. And they stop supporting the previous point release as soon as they release a new one. Yeah. It's actually kind of messed up if you're, you know, used to the support policies of framework. Um, but yeah, it means we're gonna this is something we have to face every month. Or every month that someone updates. Yeah, we probably should just keep it here. I think so. I think it should stay here. Um, I like the idea of moving it. Um, but I think, so, all right, it stays here. I think the MBA gets a, a true unit test, as in it's not using real data. It's using a fake that should mirror this sufficiently that that tests the functionality. Yay, that's all good. And then this lives here, and we deal with the fact that NetFX has a dependency on the Baldwix extension, and we just keep rolling. And the NetFX extension gets released on the schedule of the .NET teams. Um, releases plus our ability to absorb them or other people's desire to contribute and help us absorb that change, which is only going to exasperate the only being able to detect the one that you found. Yep. The .NET Core that you found, that other issue we think. Whew. I wonder how .NET Core, .NET in the future's release behavior like this is going to work out as they reach in and take try to take over all the desktop applications. I wonder if they're going to get stuck in a world where security fixes are they're going to figure out what to do about security fixes when they're not pushing the people's you know websites and things like that when it's actually on target many target computers out there. It's an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought. All right. Does that make sense then, Sean? I think basically we keep it as it is, yeah. essentially. And but Ball Wix extensions repo doesn't end up with the dependency on the NetFX repo. Yeah. And a fake little test prereq has to be written. Yeah. 
there's a test that's commented out right now that now or is skipped that now needs to be updated mm -hmm. to just use a fake package. Yep. Yep. At a certain level, that's probably a good idea anyway, because who wants to be testing with the .NET framework? <laughs> <laughs> Here, install this. No, no, wait, no. <laughs> uh, VMs. What's that? VMs. That's what VMs are for. Yeah. Well, it's just sorry. I just had flashbacks to when we were working on the Windows installer originally. Um, I was an intern, and there was a particular bug in the Windows installer where it was um, the ref counting had been broken, and or permanent was no longer being respected as permanent, or non GUIDs like the null GUID was not being respected as permanent. Anyway, one of those things did not go right, and so on the uninstall of it was Office at the time. Um, uninstall of Office was pulling Ole Ott off the machine. Ooh. And this is before, you know, system file protection, so you could actually delete Ole Ott off the machine. That, that's not going to work out well. No, because if you're okay, because Ole Ott was always loaded um, by that point, chances were it was already loaded. So it was scheduled for deletion, and then you'd restart the machine, and Ole Ott would be dead, and then the machine would blue screen. <laughs> <laughs> it was a delayed blue screen. It's like, oh, if you install this build, your machine will now blue screen. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> Don't restart. <laughs> okay, see, that was that's my my assumption of a worst case bug when you're like working on MSI is yeah, you know, some kind of reboot handling bug. Yours was kind of the opposite. It's you must not reboot. Right. <laughs> and but if you did an upgrade, it suggested you needed to reboot. So it was some, yeah. <laughs> so don't hit OK and um, go find somebody else's computer and copy Oleot onto your machine <laughs> from it. It's the same build. Ah, uh, well, yeah, I think that was less of a problem back then. But yeah, <laughs> there were fewer builds. <laughs> right. Anyway, ah, the good old days. No, no, it was really bad. VMs were awesome. VMs were awesome. Still are. And still are. All right. Um, point of order. Do we want to tackle 6209 now, knowing it's 1011, and I expect this is going to be long? Um, oh, 4703 was the easy one? Yes. <laughs> um, 4703, I, I had a feeling we had options. We, you know, we had a couple options to choose from. We just had to pick one. 6209, we have at least six options to navigate through and trying to find out how do we want the language. I, I don't want to, but I want to. I'm going to postpone 6209 because I'm not up for it, <laughs> and we'll be here until possibly 1130, um, being 1012 right now on my clock. So um, this will leave us something nice and juicy to um, hopefully have nothing to triage or very little to triage in two weeks and we will spend the whole hour or more on 6209, I expect. Sean, I'm not really trying to put you off, but I am trying to put this off <laughs> one more week. I, I, it's the very definition of putting off, but okay. Um, I'm just looking at going, this, I, this one's, I know it's going to take a while. Um, yeah. Well, I guess, do you at least understand what the problem is? Part of this, I think, is us getting to the same language on terms and getting to a common uh, ground of what are the principles that we're trying to design for um, and which principles are the most important, right? Oh, yeah, that'll definitely take an hour. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just saying, like, we need to decide, like, between, we have one option in this is um, magical names. Like, do you know the name of this identity, the, this thing, or is there a strong named element? And if there's a strong name element, is it a singleton? And if it's a singleton, where does it live? And um, those kinds of things. So it's just kind of a, we need to navigate based off of these very low order primitives of what do we want the language to look like? Um, we have to decide which of these do we want, do we find most important uh, given the shape of this thing? And well, then my how problem bad- was the, My mm -hmm. problem was that like you kept on saying this was possible in v3 and i had no idea what you're talking about so i was wondering in v3 i was wondering if you could maybe spend five or ten minutes explaining what 
that meant. Uh, that I um, I feel like I was misquoted. Um, I, how do you respond to that? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how this has been done in V3. This feature done in V3 Like, I guess based on the emails, I couldn't tell whether you understand what I was trying to, the problem I was trying to solve or not. And the biggest indicator of that to me was you kept on referring back to V3. Uh, it was probably I was trying to ground it in V3 because I was having a hard time making the jump to V4 syntax. I was trying to map it to things that I understood in V3 to know how to map them forward to V4 probably is what I was trying to do, maybe not explain that well in email, um, to find the things that can't be mapped and where, like where the gaps are. Um, I mean, nothing changed. In this area, there's no changes between V3 and V4. There's no new data. There's just the putting the theme in and, um, well, it's the matter of marking the which payload is the bootstrap replication entry point, right? As one of the big things. And the container where all those things would be put. Right? Yeah, this is about adding additional payloads into the BA container. That's the core issue. Because before they always had to be under the bootstrap application or bootstrap application ref or bootstrap right. Yeah, rough. So, like, I threw out all these different options, and you kept multiple times you said, I, I don't understand what's going on here because you can just do it in V3. Mm, that wasn't, that's not what I would have been trying to say. Um, we should go talk about the email so I can go figure out where I said that. And we can, we can just like communicate because that's just me not communicating well. Um, which happens. I hate to say it, uh, but straighten that out. I, l let's get that straightened out through the, you know, you send me an email where you're like this one, let's talk about this one. Then you and I can chat about that and we'll, we'll sort that out. Cause that's just me not communicating well in an email then. Um, and then let's go through and pick one of these designs or tweak it appropriately to get the thing laid out correctly. Because these designs that you put in the document here, let me go switch over to the document um, to show all the work that Sean has done, <laughs> done a lot on this. Um, all the different options here um, of the old one where you had to put it all underneath, all the payloads under the bootstrap application, and then how it could be different in option one. And then there's another option. Oh, I skipped option two here with the bootstrap application container, and option three with the ref being different, word four, four with the container ref and then the payload groups that we're talking about, custom bootstrap application payload groups, and then payload groups with a special ID, I think is this one, right? Or no, this is, oh no, this is the one with the bootstrap application equals yes, which has interesting side effects where payloads can end up in the wrong place based off their attribute. So like we have to go talk through all these different options and which ones we want and which ones get the user to hopefully land in the right place as we try to figure out how to label payloads and put them in the appropriate containers, uh, which is a thing that's unique to burn and has some of the more complicated code in the linker um, around this um, and putting package groups in, All right? So let's go offline, Sean. We'll talk about my poor communication, then we'll come back and hopefully we will be on the same page and then this might go a lot faster as we go through this. Okay. Cool? All okay. right. And I apologize for communicating poorly. Um, whoa, 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 here we go. Questions, comments, other things people want to talk about because that one will be a fun thing for two weeks. Uh, Jacob was talking about his pet favorite thing to have with the way caching and 
prereqs and layout, and it was kind of an interesting idea. Um, anything else out there? I think it's just Jacob today. I haven't actually been keeping track of who's watching. It says we have four viewers. That's cool. If you're here, say hi. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, otherwise, we're looking at being back in two weeks to ta target this um, multi-architecture uh, payload group container kerfuffle. There we go. I was trying to get to some sort of alliteration. Anything? Anything? All right, it's all quiet out there. So two weeks I see is November 12th. I think that should work, right? Nothing unusual about November 12th? Bob's gone quiet, Sean's gone quiet. I'm gonna assume that means everything's good. All right, so we'll be back in two weeks like usual, and we will go through what is currently the last uh, Wix 4 design discussion, which means then um, we'll talk about how we wanna track the issues. Because uh, at that point, then I'll just be making issues go to zero on preview zero. So uh, until that, two weeks from now, you guys take it, take it easy, and uh, we will uh, see you uh, in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye.